W. Fitch Company, makers of those fine Fitch products, present the new Fitch Bandwagon, starring Alice Fay. You never know just how much I love you. You never know just how much I care. And Bill Harris won't come with me to Alabama. Let's go see my dear old mammy. She's frying eggs and broiling hammy. That sugar-cured hammy. That red gravy hammy. And that's what I like about the style. <laughs> As we join Phil and Alice now, it's morning at the Harris residence, and like many a mother, Alice is busy in the nursery getting her little family ready for the day. Now hold still, baby, while I comb these pink shots. There. My, you have beautiful hair. And it's so much wavier since I've been putting it up in bobby pins every night. Mommy. Yes, honey. Will you do my hair now? You spend enough time on Daddy. <laughs> Look, kid, when you start bringing home some cabbage, we'll concentrate on you. <laughs> Up till now, you ain't made a biscuit. But, Daddy, Mommy doesn't spend all that time on her hair, and she's much prettier than you are. <laughs> That's a lie, and you know it. Don't mind your daddy, baby Alice. When he got up this morning, he was a little G R O. U C H Y. But mommy, what makes him so M E A N? You two cut that out! <laughs> now, if you have something to say, let me in on it. I'm no head man of this house. <laughs> Don't be so touchy. What do you mean, touchy? The last time you started spelling things, some doctor put me out of the room and we had baby Phyllis. <laughs> don't, don't be ridiculous. Alice, why don't you go out and play with Phyllis? I'll do your hair later. Yeah, goodbye, baby Alice. So long, hot shot. <laughs> oh, Phil, are you wearing that coat today? Why don't you wear your sport coat? No, honey. That's too long. Phil, it's not too long. Please wear it. What, and hide my yellow shoes? <laughs> Stop kidding. Hey, what are you all dressed up for? Oh, I thought I might take a run over to 20th Century Fox. They called me up yesterday. Oh, they called you up, huh? Look, kid, you don't want to make another picture. Well, I'm not saying I do, but you can't expect me to ignore them over at the studio. After all, they do have me under contract. Under contract, under contract. <laughs> I've been under contract for years with Jackson, and it don't mean nothing. <laughs> Break the contract. Oh, all right. But if I do, they'll stop sending those checks every month. Oh, well, that's different. Put on your track shoes and get on over there. <laughs> Don't be sarcastic. But, Alice, if you make another picture, who's going to take care of the house? And what about the kids? Oh, that's all right. Just you'll take care of everything. I know, honey, but who's going to do my hair? <laughs> Good morning, Sissy. How about some breakfast for the sweetest little musician this side of Lombardo? Oh. Good morning, Mr. Harris. You sit right down there and I'll fix you something real nice. Well, bless you, honey. Hey, Sissy, you always get up this early? <laughs> Mr. Harris, I don't call this early. Why, when I was a girl back home, my father got up every morning at 5.30 and brought in a big load of wood for the stove. Yeah, well, about that time, my old man would come in with a pretty big load himself. <laughs> <laughs> Excited about Mrs. Harris going to the studio this morning. Excited, Sissy? Yes, I'm so excited. I'm just overcome with emotion. <laughs> oh, you know, Miss Harris, I've always enjoyed Alice Faye so much in pictures. Why, I used to watch her in those love scenes with Tyrone Power, and I'd say to myself, wouldn't it be wonderful if that sweet little girl would marry some nice, clean-cut young fella like that? 
<laughs> that's, uh, that's what you said to yourself, huh? Oh, many times. Look, sissy, you keep putting out jive like that and you'll be visiting the employment agencies with Will Rogers, Jr. <laughs> Harris, I didn't mean it that way. Why, when I was a girl, you'd been my idea of a real man. Ah, uh, now don't try to make <laughs> no, up with me, well, sister, you, you rascal, you. Uh, your coffee's bad, too. Oh. So, look, uh, I bet you still have plenty of dates on your day off, though, don't you? Oh, don't be silly, Mr. Harris. After a girl gets past 40, she transfers her affection from men to Sloan's liniments. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee, now, Sissy, I don't have the time. I gotta get down to rehearsal. Bye now. Bye. Bye. I'm talking about, fellas. Now you're getting it. That was all right. You know something you're playing much better since you started soaking your reeds in Dad's old-fashioned root beer. <laughs> you're doing all right. Now keep it up. Now let's grab this next one here and really put it over. Wait a minute. What's the matter with you, Artie? What do you mean, Phil? Well, you ain't said nothing. Don't you have to drive your mother-in-law someplace? Uh-uh. I drove her to Santa Monica last week. Well, what are you doing this week? Waiting for the tide to come in. <laughs> Waiting for the tide to come in. Yeah, and if he don't come in with it, I'm sitting pretty. Oh, wait. Well. <laughs> now sit back there, Artie, and let's take this number. You ready, fellas? Take it from me. One, two. <laughs> Down among Brazilian coffee beans grow by the billion, so they've got to find those extra cups to fill. They've got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil. You can't get cherry soda cause they've got to sell their soda and the way things look, I guess they never will. They've got a billion tons of coffee in Brazil. No tea or tomato juice, you'll see. No potato juice. Cause the planters down in Santos all say no, no, no. A politician's daughter was accused of drinking water and was fined a great big $50 bill. They've got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil. You get a date, and when you get her, she smells like a percolator. Her perfume was made right on the grill. Why they could percolate an ocean in Brazil. When their ham and eggs need savor, coffee ketchup is their flavor. Coffee pickles way out, sell the dill. Who oh, they put coffee in their coffee in Brazil. No tea or tomato juice. You'll see no golden van of juice. Cause the planters down in Santos all say no, no, no. So you'll add to the local color Serving coffee with a crawler Dunking doesn't take a lot of skill They've got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil So when in full dress Have a demi test Drink it steamy and creamy or black Jack, there's an awful lot of coffee in Brazil Ladies, for top-to-toe beauty, start at the top with your hair. Keep it refreshingly clean, velvety soft, delight with loveliness. Thousands of discriminating women have found that Fitz Dandruff Remover Shampoo leaves their hair lovelier and easier to manage. You see, Fitz has a special reconditioning action that thoroughly cleanses your hair and scalp. And since Fitz is completely soluble in water, only an ordinary water rinse is needed to give your hair that clean, sparkling look. Well-groomed women know that clean hair means beautiful hair. That's why so many use Fitz Dandruff Remover Shampoo, for it leaves their hair soft and glorious looking, jeweled with star-bright light. For beautiful hair, use Fitz Shampoo regularly each week. Buy a big economical bottle of Fitz Dandruff Remover Shampoo at your drug or toilet goods counter or have professional applications at your beauty or barber shop. Uh, 
Los Angeles Times, Colin. Yes. Are you Alice Faye? Yes. The big moving picture star? Well, yes. Are you the Alice Faye who's married to Phil Harris? Yes, I'm married to Phil Harris. You lucky girl, you. <laughs> well, it's you. Sure, it's me. <laughs> hey, uh, how'd you make out the studio? Oh, well, honey, they have a wonderful story they'd like me to do. Yeah? What part does Don Amici play? <laughs> no, no, Don isn't with them anymore. No? That's gratitude for you. He invents the telephone for them, and then when things get tough, they throw them out. <laughs> Well, you know that's not true. All right, so it's not true. Well, are you going to make the picture or aren't you? Oh, I don't know, Phil. They're sending George Markham, the producer, out to the house this afternoon to talk it over. All right, all right. I got to get the outfit. What I want to know is why are they after you? Well, they must think I'm still good box office. Yeah, I thought they replaced you with Thunderhead, son of Flicker. <laughs> Alice? Alice? Hmm. I wonder why she hung up. Hey, Phil, is rehearsal over? Am I late? Late? Certainly you're, you're late. And rehearsal's over. Where you been anyway? Well, I had to get down to court this morning. Oh. I got a ticket last night for parking at the curb. What do you mean? You ain't got no car. I know. I was just laying there. <laughs> Look, Frankie, for the last time, lay off of them tired jokes this morning. Okay, Charlie. What's the matter? You look worried. I got a right to be worried. Alice is talking about making another picture. No kidding? Yeah, and she's got one of them producer guys from 20th Century coming over to the house this afternoon. You know, Curly, since you've been married to Alice, I've seen her in a lot of pictures, and something's been bothering me. Yeah? What is it? How do you feel about her kissing them other crumbs? <laughs> How do I feel about it? Look, kid, how would you feel if someone came home one night and you found them watering your bourbon? <laughs> horrible thought. It's a horrible reading, too. <laughs> Look, Curly, if she's making another picture, how come you ain't in it? Who, me? Yeah. Now is the time, kid. You're right. Besides, all them married people act together. <laughs> Look at Lawrence Olivier and Vivian Lee. And that other couple, Lum and Abner. <laughs> Frankie, they're not married. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. They're sisters. <laughs> but you get the idea. Play it smart, kid. Get Alice to work you in there. But I don't know nothing about that acting racket. Fake it. You didn't know nothing about music, and that never held you back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Look, Curly, you're getting one picture that'll make you. Why, I can see it now. Alice Faye, supported by Phil Harris. It's no use, Frankie. Her old lady's had that same dream for years. <laughs> Look, Phil, there's nothing to it. Just to like all them foreign actors who come over here. Start throwing a little Shakespeare around and you're in. Uh, huh? Yeah, these Hollywood producers always go for them monkeys from the legitimate theater. Yeah, but wait a minute. Who's Shakespeare? <laughs> you know, the famous Beard of Avon. Oh, yeah, Marty Woolley. <laughs> no, no, no. Shakespeare was a writer. You know, the stuff like, uh, Alas, poor Yorick. I know him well. Yeah? Who's the guy Yorick? <laughs> well, he wasn't exactly a guy. He was a skull. Skull? No? Yeah. What was played on the stage by John Carradine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, are you sure that they go for them Shakespearean actors' things and pictures? Oh, what do you mean that they go for Shakespeare? Look at Lost Weekend. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I love that one. Mommy? You're going to make another picture. Well, Phyllis, I might. What part is Mr. Amici going to play? Oh, oh, he won't be in it, honey. Oh. I guess he doesn't need the money anyway. What makes you say that? Well, this little boy is going to have lots of money. He said he's going to buy his mommy a fur coat and his daddy a brand new house. 
But, honey, he's only six years old. Where would he get all that money? He told me he was going to sell his kitty car to Madman Mark. <laughs> oh, baby, he was just fooling you. Why are you playing that piece, Mommy? Oh, it's a song I did in a picture once. Is it a pretty song? Well, it's a favorite of mine. See if you like it. You'll never know just how much I love you. You'll never know just how much I care. And if I try, I still couldn't hide my love for you. You ought to know, for haven't I told you so? A million or more times, you went away, and my heart went away. I've been working on the pear trees. Pear trees? Yeah, you know what that is, the pear. A pear is a banana with its girdle off. <laughs> oh, banana with its girdle off. Oh, I gotta use it sometimes. Look, uh, uh, say, listen, uh, you got a lot of books up in your room, haven't you, Luigi? Oh, yes, my So Luigi lives in a world of books. You know, when he wants to enjoy beautiful thoughts, he have a little poetry book. And when he wants to visit the far places of the earth, he have a little travel book for that. Yeah. Hey, Luigi. Hmm? Uh, how about uh, Luigi? He want to uh, have a little date sometimes. <laughs> Luigi have a little black book for uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sir, I know what you mean. Mine went up in flames five years ago. <laughs> Oh, I think Mrs. Harris make you burn it, eh? Heck no, it was a case of spontaneous combustion. <laughs> <laughs> it was loaded, Luigi. Hey, listen, uh, in those books of yours, uh, you happen to have any up there by, uh, uh, by a guy named Shakespeare? Oh, yes, maestro, I've always was. What beautiful books. They are all for Rocco Bond. I don't care where they're going. Can I borrow a couple of them? <laughs> sure, Miss Harris. If you come up to my room, you can pick up. Well, I will. Come Mrs. Harris, what is it, sister? There's a Mr. Markham from the studio here to see you. Oh, yes. Come on in, George. I'm in here. Oh, hello, Alice. Gosh, it's good to see you again. You're looking great. 
Thanks, George. I'm sorry I missed you over at the studio this morning. Well, we often talk about you over there, Alice. Why, they've almost forgiven you for marrying Phil Harris. <laughs> <laughs> I knew they would someday. Well, we don't want to rush you, Alice, but I brought a copy of the story along. Well, George, I haven't exactly made up my mind yet about making another picture. You know, my family keeps me pretty busy. Yes, yes. Oh, by the way, Alice, we've been friends a long time. I wonder if you'd mind a personal question. Oh, no, George. What is it? Well, is it really true that he makes you curl his hair? <laughs> oh, George, I, I don't know where people get such wild ideas about Phil. Well, after all, he is quite a character on the Jack Benny program. Yes, but really, George, he's not that way at all when you get to know him. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well... <clears throat> Alice, I think this story fits you like a glove. Now, if we can get Ty Power to play the lead and do a rewrite on the... Hey, Alice! Alice! I'm home! Oh, Phil, come on in here. I want you to meet somebody. Phil, you know George Markham from 20th Century. Glad to see you, Phil. A lot, poor Yardick. I knew him. Well? (laughs) Excuse me? Hark! The gentle music stopped This golden lute is heard no more. Can this be fate? No, it is Petrillo. <laughs> and home is going to square it with the union. <laughs> Wait a minute, Phil. I'm afraid I don't quite understand you. Well, don't let it throw you, Doc. It's a little jive I picked up in the illegitimate theater. Phil <laughs> well, Harris, what is this nonsense? Now, let me do the talking, kid. Now, look here, Doc. Here's the way I got it figured out. You team up me and Alice and this turkey, and before you know it, you'll have a combination bigger than Lawrence Liver and Vivian Lehigh. Do I understand that you want to be in this picture? Well, why not? Harris is right. That's becoming increasingly apparent. (laughs) George, I'm sorry. I think maybe we'd better talk this over some other time. Yes, yes, Alice. You look over the story, and I'll call you later in the week. Uh, Goodbye. Wilt thou be gone? It is not yet near day. It was the nightingale and not the lark that feared the fearful hollow of thine ear. <laughs> oh, Phil Harris, no. Oh, no. Well, what's so funny? What's so funny? What's so funny? It was the nightingale and not the lark. Oh, what a performance. Yeah, well, when you started out, you were no Sarah Bernhardt, you know. Yeah. Well, maybe not, but the first part I ever had on the stage, I read lines better than that. Some lines you had. Before you went on, you'd say to the manager, put another patch on my bubble, Herman. We've got a wild house tonight. <laughs> you know, I was never a bubble dancer. All right, I don't know. Well, never mind that nonsense. I did pretty well in pictures. How could you miss? All you ever did was to come out in 12 petticoats, kick your leg a couple of times and holler, Hello, uh, Frisco. Hello, that's the only way that you were here, Al. <laughs> and don't say Frisco. It's Hello, San Francisco. Because I love them up there, and they love me up there. Hello, San Francisco. Anyway, anyway, before we were married, you used to see all my pictures five or six times. Well, certainly I did. I didn't want you to see them all by yourself. <laughs> oh, that's so. You made me go along to read you the titles. Well, I got a right to know what's going on. <laughs> well, anyway, I wish you hadn't tried to be so smart in front of George Markham. George Markham, George Markham. Is he a genius or something? Well, he's held an important job over there for a good many years, and he'll be there for a good many more. Yeah, well, don't count on it, sister. A lot of other guys thought the same thing until last Tuesday. <laughs> Another cup of coffee, Mr. Batterville. Or is it Gregory Peck? I don't know. It all depends on what you put in the coffee. <laughs> Listen. All right, so you're ribbing me. Look, sir, you can't blame a guy for trying. Oh, well, you sounded so silly doing Shakespeare. The way you came in and started... Hello? Oh, hello there. Yes? Phil? Mm-hmm. He's right here. Just a minute. Phil, yeah, it's for you. It's George Markham. For me? Yes, and he says it's important. 
So I looked kind of silly doing Shakespeare, did I? <laughs> oh, look, honey, Harris is in. You can't hide talent, sister. You can't <laughs> I'll be known as Pretty Boy Harris from here on. Get on that Tyrone Flower. Give him a block. Look, watch me handle this guy. Hello, GM. Philzy speaking. Hello, Phil. Uh, when I was out at your house this afternoon, I'm afraid I overlooked something. <clears throat> yes, yes. Uh, I sort of figured the same thing. I have a little job for you, Phil. Oh, oh, you do, huh? So soon? Yes, yes. When I was over there this afternoon, I left my gold cigarette lighter. Would you mind dropping it at my office in the morning? Oh. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. If you want the truth, go to a child is a popular expression. But if you have unsightly dandruff and want to know the truth about it, just go to your mirror. If your mirror could talk, it would probably tell you to use Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. For Fitch is the only shampoo made whose guarantee to remove dandruff with the first application is backed by one of the world's largest insurance firms. Fitch dissolves all traces of dandruff on the hair and scalp and then forms a rich, creamy lather to carry away the dissolved dandruff. This famous shampoo has many other advantages. Fitch reconditions your hair and your scalp as it thoroughly penetrates and cleanses the thousands of tiny hair openings. Fitch is so gentle, it will not harm even a baby's tender scalp. It makes your scalp tingle with that clean sensation. After a Fitch shampoo, let your mirror show you how Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo leaves your hair free of dandruff, sparkling clean, and shining with natural highlights. Fitch is spelled F-I-T-C-H. What is it, baby Alice? I'm busy. Well, Luigi wants to know if he can have his Shakespeare books back. Can't you see that Daddy's still using them? Oh, Phil. Give the books back to Luigi. You can color pictures in something else. when the F.W. Fitch Company again brings you the Fitch Bandwagon with Alice Fay and Phil Harris. This program is written by Joe Connolly and Bob Mosier, directed by Paul Phillips, with original music composed and conducted by Walter Sharp. Included in the cast were Janine Ruth and Ann Whitfield. Alice Fay appears to the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Laugh a while and a song be inside you, Fitch. After in between fit shampoo, 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 after in between fit shampoos, you can keep your hair shining and manageable by using a few drops of Fitch's Ideal Hair Tonic every day. Fitch's Ideal Hair Tonic is not sticky or greasy, yet it gives your hair that well-groomed look. Bill Foreman speaking. NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.